everyone, it's Jane. It's fall, which means I have my fireplace burning in the background to throw it back to 2015 Jane, who was super fall. <laughs> but today I'm talking about something that's a little bit more personal. So I got a breast reduction surgery this summer. I went from a 32G, which is equivalent to a 32 quadruple D, to a 32 full C slash small D cup. So huge difference. First of all, I don't regret a single bit of it. It is the best decision I ever made and so a bunch of you guys are requesting that I talk about it and answer some questions so I have some notes right here and that's exactly what I'm gonna do. I wanted to make this video because it feels like there are a lot of experience videos about breast reduction surgeries but there are very few with teenagers so I just wanted to be a resource if you have any questions about it please just feel free to contact me on any of my social media don't forget to subscribe if you want to and yeah let's get started so the first thing I'm gonna cover is sort of my backstory and why I got the surgery in the first place. Sorry if the lighting changed, I just messed around with a couple of settings because it was looking a little dark, but we should be good to go now. Eighth grade is the year that my boobs started to develop and grow. Um, in seventh grade, I was relatively flat chested, and then in eighth grade, I started to develop. And at the end of eighth grade, I was about a B cup. And I was really happy at that size. I was fine if they didn't grow anymore. I felt like they were very proportional to my body, and I hadn't grown to quite the height that I am now, I was about 5'4", and so on my 5'4 frame, B cup felt like very proportional to me and I was really happy there. Um, <laughs> unfortunately, to my surprise, they didn't stop growing. So between 8th and 9th grade, I grew about two more cup sizes, so at the beginning of freshman year in high school, I was a D cup, and at the end of freshman year, I was a double D cup, um, and at at this point, I was starting to get a little bit concerned because I was just wondering why they didn't stop growing and it definitely led to some confidence issues because I, even at a double D, I felt like I just, they were already too big for me and double D is not that big. Like, they're big, but they're not uncomfortably large. Um, and so I just started finding out that I couldn't really fit into a lot of the same shirts that I could or I started looking more bloated because the heaviness of them like weighed my stomach skin down. It's a very weird phenomenon that's hard to understand if you haven't had big boobs. In sophomore year, I grew to a triple D and then to a quadruple D at the end of sophomore year. So I was a size G, I was a 32 G. And at that point, I was completely freaked out. They were huge and uncomfortable and like saggy, and that might be TMI. But I just felt really ugly. And it's an interesting thing because society wants women to have these giant boobs, but actually having them is a whole different story. And I was in pain. I felt terrible about myself. And I'd come to school and my friends would be like, whoa! you know, I knew your boobs were big, but I didn't know they were that big. And so through junior year, they stayed at about a G. They didn't get quite bigger than that. It's hard to know that there's something that people see about you and they assume things about. And I just, I was really uncomfortable and playing tennis and exercising was very difficult because it hurt. Like the skin here hurt so badly. Let me, let me put my hair back for a second. So there was a growing curve in my back like this way. So these are called your trapezoidal muscles here, kind of the ones above your collarbones. So they were holding up the bulk of the weight that I had from my chest. So they were becoming like, this is, if I'm not sitting up straight, this is what they look like. And if I do sit up straight, they look a lot taller. So all the time I looked like this because I it hurt to sit up straight. I could not sit up straight for more than five seconds without getting intense pain in my back. And so I just slouch and my posture was becoming terrible. And the summer after junior year, I went to a special bathing suit store to buy G-size bikinis because I was going to Hawaii and I felt terrible about myself and just ugly and unfeminine. And I was crying in the store and at home and my mom said, would you ever consider getting breast erection surgery? And I had thought about it, but I never thought it would be a possibility at all. Um, and so we started talking about it and I said, yeah, that would definitely be something I'd consider. And so this is late May, early June. Um, we went to have a consultation with a plastic surgeon in Beverly Hills. His name's Ritu Chopra. He did an amazing job. I'm just saying. He was, I recommend him. Um, so we had a consultation with him and he said that he could help me get down to a size that I wanted and that would be proportional to my body. 
Um, and so he went over some of the risks and some of the potential pros of the surgery as well. And some of the risks were that, yes, I was young, so it's just not a super common surgery on people my age. I'll just go over some of the risks with you guys right now, just in case any of you are wondering. Um, so there is a risk that you'll lose feeling permanently in parts um, or maybe your entire breasts. Um, there's a chance that either you cannot breastfeed anymore or your ability to breastfeed will be inhibited so you can't produce as much. There are risks of infection and surgical complications and things like that. And so for about a month I was going over the pros and cons in my head. It took me a little while to decide. But I was willing to accept the risks of breastfeeding and that they might get bigger when I have children and stuff like that because I'm not going to be having children for a very long time and I wanted to be happy throughout my teens and 20s when those are some really cool times of a person's life and I just didn't want my boobs to be holding me back from that, of all things. So we set the appointment date for August 1st, um, which is right after I came back from a trip. And leading up to it, I was so excited. I was nervous, of course, but mostly I was just really excited because I couldn't wait just to have my entire body change and I'd be able to exercise more and I'd feel more comfortable going out and spending time with people because I wouldn't be so insecure all the time. So I get to the surgical center. I didn't have my surgery in a hospital, but I get to the surgical center and we put me in a gown and all these things and I couldn't eat or drink anything, including water, gum, could not put anything in my mouth past midnight the night before. And I had my surgery at seven in the morning. I had to be there at six. Um, and so the doctors came in and some surgical assistants and they drew a bunch of marks all over my chest to see where they'd lift and reduce from. And so then I basically looked like a plastic surgery Barbie and I was ready for surgery. So I was taken onto an operating table and everybody was so kind, so nice and encouraging. And I didn't really feel nervous until I said goodbye to my parents and I went into the operating room and that's when they had to put in the IV. Um, so my IV was a little bit troubling because my veins are small, I guess. So they went in this arm, that didn't work. Tried this arm, that didn't work. Then they had to go into my wrist and that didn't work either. Um, and at that point they gave me laughing gas because I was in so much pain and I was so scared and nervous and frustrated that my veins were not giving blood. And eventually they went into my hand here, but I was, the gas sort of helped me be a little bit out of it for that situation, so it wasn't too bad. And that's it. The next thing I remember, I was awake and I didn't feel nauseous or anything when I woke up. Actually, that's not true. I did feel nauseous when I woke up, but I didn't need to throw up or anything. TMI again, but I feel like it's important to say I didn't throw up. Was lying in bed for a while and I was in the surgical center maybe 45 minutes until I was allowed to go home. They didn't keep me overnight. Um, and I was wrapped in very thick bandages that were super tight and I was very, very much out of it. But then I went home. So the recovery period was about four days. So I was on really heavy painkillers for two days and after that they started to give me intense, intense migraines, so I just decided I'd go off them because the migraines was worse than the dull or bruising pain of the surgery. I didn't have any um, blood drains or any incision pain as well either. It was just the bruising. I went off the heavy duty pain meds and I just started taking Tylenol and I could drive within four or five days. I felt totally fine. Um, for about a month, I wore this thing zips up in the front, surgical bra, um, and after I was able to take the bandages off, you had to put gauze on, and then you put on the gauze, put the surgical bra on top, and then once the gauze pads were over, we used these things called steri strips just to make sure that the incisions closed. And when I had the steri strips on, that's when I could shower and everything, which was great because I was feeling disgusting. Um, but my friends were super nice about it, and they brought me food and love, and I love my friends. So if you were supportive. I love you, you are great, and thank you, because it made it a lot easier. So the Steri strips were on for about three weeks, um, and so I took them off probably two weeks ago, I took them all off, and my scars are healing unbelievably well. Like, they're barely visible, and I'm only two months post-op, which I think is incredible, and it's only going to get better. Now every day I put on this Biocornium um, SPF scar cream. You put it on before you go out in the sun, so I just put it on once a day. But I mean, I'm playing tennis, I'm running, I'm doing everything that I 
struggled to do before and I've had no problems with the incisions. But now, here I am sitting in an adorable little shirt that I would not be able to wear before and I recommend that if you're considering it, even if you're young, ask a doctor, talk about it, talk about it with your family if that's something that's comfortable enough for you and I don't regret a single minute of it. The recovery was much less intense than I thought it would be. The scars are just amazing. Like, they're great. And just the whole outcome and the result and everything is just something that I'm so happy with. And I feel like now they're really proportional to my body. But yeah, that concludes this video. And like I said, if you enjoyed it, give it a thumbs up. And if you have any questions below or thoughts or anything, comment them below. I'll ask that you stay positive because this is something I'm kind of personal about. So don't wreck me or anything. <laughs> but yeah, thank you so much for watching this video. And thank you for asking for the, my followers and stuff who are wondering about how I've been. I've been great. Thank you for asking. And I'll see you guys in the next one. Love you guys.